Art Attack is sponsored by Pridstick. This is an Art Attack. This is an Art Attack. This is Art Attack. really like or you've got a picture of your favorite pin-up or pop star and you want to stick it to your wall but you're not allowed to because of the wallpaper what you need is a pair of handy grippers and you can put your picture wherever you like come and have a look at this cut a piece of card from a cardboard box and place four fingers of one hand down onto the card and then draw around the four fingers and the idea is to just gently Press the pencil between your fingers like that to get the full shape of your fingers. Now, it's very important that you keep your fingers closed, but just gently squeeze the pencil in. And it's just the four fingers you want. You don't want to draw the rest of your hand or your thumb. And when you've drawn your four fingers, take your fingers away and turn each of those fingers into a sort of blobby sausage shape, just by completing the finger with a curve like that. When you've done that, cut it out. If you find cardboard difficult to cut, you could always wet it around the edges first. And when you've cut it out, you'll have something that looks like that, a set of sausage fingers. Then find another piece of your card there, place your fingers over the card, and it's very important that you turn them over face down and place them on the card. And then just use this as a template to draw around to create another set of sausage fingers. And when you take your template away, you have the shape, but you need to complete your fingers, this time by just drawing some straight lines across there like that. Cut those out and you have two sets of sausage fingers and then paint them to suit your own hand. Now I've mixed some white, red and yellow paint here to match my hand and I'm just going to paint one of the fingers here to show you. That's just a case of mixing the paint to suit or match your own fingers. And when you've painted all the fingers on both hands, you have something that looks like that. And see what I've done here? I've even picked out the outline in black felt-tip pen. And then add on some detail. And you can have some good fun here because it's just a case of copying what's on your own fingers. Just a detail of your fingers. You can put on your fingernails like this, just at the fingertips there. And you could even put on some of those creases and cracks that you get in your joints. I'll just put a couple on there. And I'll put on some of those creases at the knuckles. I've probably got more than you because I'm older than you. But there you go. Put those on like that. And the more detail you put on, the better. Look what I've done here. I've even painted some shade around those fingers by mixing my paint slightly darker. And I've done some lighter fingernails. Do both sets of fingers in the same way and you have two sets of hands. Then to turn them into handy grippers, draw around a ruler onto your cardboard box and cut out a strip of cardboard that's the same size as your ruler. Then place that down and place one of the hands on the strip and measure one hand's length along the strip and snip that off. Put that on side because I'll need that. And then another hand's length along the strip like that and snip that off. Get rid of the excess there, we won't need that. So you've got two cardboard strips that are the same length as your hands. And then it's a case of taking some PVA glue and just dabbing a nice thick layer of glue, roughly two centimetres wide at the end of each strip. See that? Roughly two centimetres wide, lots of glue. You've got PVA glue, you can use any strong glue. And then just position that strip and the glue over the back of one of your hands, just in from the knuckle end and press it firmly down into place like that. And just check that you've got it on the knuckle end. Yeah, there's the knuckle end, see that? As opposed to 
the fingertips and the nails here and then just press it firmly into place and then leave it to one side to dry and when it dries you have a handy gripper that opens at the fingertips and at the nail end see that and do that with both of them and you have two handy grippers and then take the picture that you want to show off and draw around that on your cardboard box around one of the other sides of your cardboard box cut that out so that you have a piece of cardboard that's the same size as the picture you want to show off place your picture on top and the great thing about this technique is you don't need to glue your picture down you just take your handy grippers and you slip one on one side of the picture and one on the other side of the picture and the handy grippers grip the picture to the board and look at that and then you can place your picture and display it wherever you want look at that and the hands grip the picture or you could do this you could tape a piece of string to the back of your cardboard like that and then you could hang it up wherever you want see that you see little technique isn't it well what about this you could cut out a triangle of cardboard again from your cardboard box and just tape it to the back of that piece of cardboard and then it will be able to free stand wherever you want so you don't need to worry about the wallpaper try it yourself handy grippers and show off your pictures hello it's the head here what a right useful thoroughly practical idea now if you want to make a gripper, just remember to draw around your four fingers onto some card, keeping them closed. Gently push your pencil between them to get the shape of your fingers. Turn each finger into a sausage and then cut this out. Then paint and draw in the hand detail. Put some glue at the end of a strip of card and position it on the back of the hand just in from the knuckle. And if you make another one in the same way, you'll have a right useful pair of handy grippers. Oh!
here's a great trick for you. But first, I'm going to do a quick sketch. Now, I'm just using some chalk pastel for this. You, you could try pastels or chalk or even wax crayons to get this effect. delicate bit in there. Now, I'm just going to add in some highlights here. Little white highlights on the edge of things and little clouds. Nice hazy sun at the end of the day. <sighs> and there it is, a picture of two people horseback riding near the water's edge. But hold on, I hear you cry. Where is the water? Well, that's the trick. Next time you draw a picture and it comes to putting in the water, whether it's a river or the sea, don't put in the water. Just put in the reflections of things in the water. For example, I'm just going to put a hazy reflection of these horses in. Now, don't forget, reflections in water are always upside down because the water acts as a sort of mirror. Now, whenever you're looking at water, it's usually the reflections that you're seeing, not the water itself. For example, when you're looking at a nice blue sea, it's not the water that's blue, it's actually the reflection of the blue sky in the water. And now the reflections of all those little highlights cast by the sun. And there it is, water. And I haven't even drawn any water. Try it yourself. The next time you come to putting water in your picture, don't. Just the reflections. Oh, what a wonderful way of doing watery pictures. Don't draw the water, just draw the reflections. Hey, have a look at mine. <coughs> well, it's all dried up, hasn't it? <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica. I had an old attack using glue, newspaper and a carpet roll to make my totem pole. Hi, my name's Helen. After modelling some shapes of some characters on my totem pole, I used paper mache and white tissue paper to add strength and texture. Then I painted it. Hi, I'm Joe. I made this totem pole using a carpet shears. I stuck a moulded newspaper shape and painted it with some traditional colours. Oh, brilliant art attack, totem poles. Now, tribesmen carve their totem poles out of hollowed out tree trunks. Now, we're going to carve our totem poles out of hollowed out <laughs> loo roll tubes. Now, you can use as many as you want, and the idea is to stack them one on top of each other. And to get them to join together, we'll have to make some cardboard collars. And to do this, cut some strips of cereal box card, and you need to have strips that measure the same width as your loo roll tube, but a couple of centimetres taller and you need three of those and then just roll it up like that and pop it into the top of your loo roll tube and just force it out to the shape of your loo roll tube and press it in so it goes about halfway in and then glue or tape it securely in place and when your tape or your glue is dry do the same with the rest of your loo roll tubes and you have some really secure cardboard collars and you'll be able to stack them one on top of the other like that. And when you've got them, just take them apart like that and then design on your totem pole faces. Now, it's a good idea to make these as bizarre as you possibly can. Because you see, those tribesmen in Northwest America and Canada, they used to make some really weird and bizarre carvings. And they were based on their chief's family or the history of their chief. And I don't know why they made them so weird maybe it was to 
frighten other tribes away or something like that. But I think it's great fun to make some really gruesome faces. You can model them on whoever you like, really. Maybe even in your own family. And when you've got it to this stage, you can, if you want, paint it. But if you want to make it look realistic, make it look really carved, then add some 3D to the features. And you can pop on some cut-out bits of cardboard. There's a nice cardboard nose. Or what about this? Why not mix some PVA glue in equal parts with water and then dip in some scrunched up bits of loo roll or tissue paper. Just dipping them in there, scrunch those up. And it's just a case of pressing them onto your loo roll tube and molding them into place to give it a nice carved 3D feel. And if you do the whole of your loo roll tube in exactly the same way, when the glue is dry, look at that, the tissue paper has gone rock solid and it really does look carved. And again, do all the loo roll tubes in exactly the same way, only design each one a bit different from the others and you have something that looks like that. And then decide which one you want to go on the bottom. I think I'll use that one on the bottom. And cut a good stiff card square from cereal box card. And the sides of that square need to measure roughly the same as the height of your loo roll tube. And then just put a load of glue on the bottom of this loo roll tube. And then just stick it securely to that cardboard base. And I'm just going to leave it to one side to dry. And while it's drying, you can take one of your other Lural tubes and paint it up. And because you've done such gaudy faces, it's a good idea to use gaudy colours. You just paint this tongue to show you. And if you do them all in the same way, you can add on more bits of detail with felt tip pen. And when they're finished, they look something like that when your paint's dry. And it's just a case of stacking them one on top of the other with your cardboard collars and there it is or with a bit of sticky out card and tissue paper your own homemade totem pole now you can of course do one based on bizarre and weird faces like this one i've done here or you can try a themed totem pole what about doing the theme of the family and on the bottom is long suffering dad and then on top of him is mum and then on top of mum is screaming baby <laughs> or what about doing an animal theme what about a cheeky monkey on the bottom and a fierce tiger with cardboard bristles there and an owl at the top with cardboard wings or what about you could even try a sporty one and on the bottom there i've got a rugby player and then a tennis player with cardboard arms and racket a cricket player and on the top a hockey player all stuck together with cardboard collars Try it yourself, your own homemade totem pole, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!